So partial sums and their error. So we're trying to find some sum and let's just go with the example that we have and goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. And if this goes on forever, one plus a fourth plus one ninth keeps going forever and ever and ever, we're considering partial sums. So if I look at sum n, that would be the sum as i goes from one to n of one over i squared, which starts the same way, but definitely stops whenever we get to n. This sum up here keeps going. So this part of stuff that I didn't include in whatever partial sum I'm at, that's called the remainder of my series. And it's also my error in finding the actual value, right? So my error in calculation is always the actual sum minus the partial sum. And we also call, call that the nth remainder. And the nth remainder always starts off with n plus one. So r sub n is always equal to the sum as let's say i equals n plus one to infinity of whatever we're adding up. In this case, we're adding up one over i squared. And that's just the one over n plus one squared in this case, one over n plus two, and so on. What I wanna do is look at how does the integral that we were looking at before compare to this? And there's two ways to look at that left-hand endpoints or right-hand endpoints. So here's my function, it's decreasing. At some point here, let's say I'm kind of zoomed in, I broke the axis there. This is n, this is n plus one, this is n plus two. And I'm going to use right hand endpoints so this term right here is my a sub n this is my a sub n plus one in the rectangle this is a sub n plus two so in this case right here my remainder r sub n the sum from a sub n plus one onward is bigger than the integral from n plus one to infinity of my function f of x. If I look at it in terms, instead of left-hand endpoints, right-hand endpoints, there's my function coming down. At some point I hit n, and then n plus one, and n plus two, and I look at right-hand endpoints, then I get this scenario. And here is my a sub n, here is my a sub n plus one, here is my a sub n plus two, and so on. Starting with this term right here, that's my r sub n. This time my r sub n is less than the integral starting at n. So what this does here, looking at left-hand versus right-hand endpoints, it puts the remainder in between these two integrals. So this error in calculation, which is also the remainder, lives in between them. So here's my remainder. On one side, I have the integral from n to infinity of my function. On the other side, I have the integral from n plus one to infinity of my function. Now, I may not know what the sum converges to, but I was able to use the integral test to show that it does converge. That means I can also calculate each of these integrals on each side of the inequality and tell you an upper limit and a lower limit for how far I'm off I am from the actual sum. So if you say, I need you to be within a millionth of the actual infinite sum, then I can mess around with the integral to figure out how many ends I need to make that happen.
So let's play around with that for this particular function we're working at, the sum of the reciprocals of the squares. So we have just consider the integral from a to infinity of one over x squared dx, which technically is the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from a to b of one over x squared dx. We know an antiderivative for that. So now I have the limit as b goes to infinity of negative one over b minus negative one over a, right? Because the antiderivative for that is negative one over x. As b goes to infinity, this part goes to zero, leaving minus negative one over a, which is just one over a. My remainder, so again, I'm trying to find s, which is the sum as i goes from one to infinity of one over i squared. Since I can't go to infinity, I'm left with some partial sum. Oops, as i goes from one to infinity, sorry, n of one over i squared. Once I stop at that n, I have error. We now know that error, which is the remainder everything after n, n plus one and beyond, lives between that integral from n to infinity of my one over x squared dx and n plus one to infinity of one over x squared plus x, or dx, sorry. And we know that's always one over the lower boundary based on that calculation above. So on this side here, that remainder, has to be less than one over n and bigger than one over n plus one. It lives somewhere in between there. A moment ago, I found the partial sum for the, th the thousandth one. So I determined that S sub 1000 was about, let's just copy those, well, let me copy them, there we go. All those decimals, how many of them are reasonably accurate? up a little, oops, big enough. Okay, so this is what Desmos says. Some of these decimal places are accurate and some are not. My error in this approximation right here, my remainder, what I'm missing is somewhere between one over a thousand and one and one over 1000. So that means I am confident about one, two, three places here, but not the other ones. In this case, it's pretty nice because one over N is the upper bound on my error. So if I wanted one more decimal place of accuracy, how many more terms, how many terms would I have to add up total if I wanted a fourth decimal place? I don't know here. Add another zero, add 10,000 terms. And what if I need five decimal places of accuracy? I would have to add 100,000 terms. What if I wanted ten, uh, six decimal places of accuracy? I would have to add a million terms to get six de decimal places of accuracy. Okay, now that's just the remainder for this original sum. Every sum is different, and we have to take them one at a time. But the re remainder theorem tells me how close I am. To the actual sum. Notice it doesn't tell me what the actual sum is. I still don't know that. All right, we're going to have to find some other technique to find that. But now we have a way to estimate our error and approximation. <laughs>